Hello and welcome to another little wild camping adventure. I've got a brand new tiny tent to show you today, but I've also gone pretty tiny on everything, cramming a full camping setup into my Osprey Talon 22 litre backpack. Look at him sprinting up. That's a tough slog up. Almost at the top now though. Look at the views again. Incredible. Hopefully now we're on the flatter stuff. I can get my second wind. So I found our spot for the night. A little bit of shelter from these rocks. Some decent views and all. Alright, so somehow I've managed to get everything full wild camping set up into a 22 litre backpack. Um, it is crammed to the rafters and it would be more comfortable in my 33 litre pack, but I just wanted to see it done. Anyway, this is my tent for the day. Uh, Van Gogh Neon UL. This is tiny. I've made the cardinal sin. I've not pitched it up before, so it's going to be the first time. I have checked that everything's there though. Andy's he's setting up things ready in case we need the helicopter to land later. <laughs> Very bright. So previously, my tiny tent has actually been a bivvy bag. This is a double skin tent. Weighs in, I don't know the exact figure, it's about 500 grams, so it's half the weight of my Rab Ridge Raider. I'm hoping it's got a bit more room in it as well. The pole on this is very thin. It only looks about six millimeters. I'll have a look, see if I find the spec on the screen. So there's no pole sleeve. That must be to save a couple of grams. All goes up on the inside. And it looks like you wrap it around with these little Velcro things. Two hand job really. Can do it with one though. I brought my own pegs, show you why in a minute. All right, these are the pegs that come with it. So you get two of these little 
um, Y-shaped pegs, which aren't too bad. But these are just glorified toothpicks, cocktail sticks. They are either used in an ornament, but it isn't just Van Gogh. It seems like most tent manufacturers supply their tents with rubbish tent pegs. Right, so while I'm in this tiny tent, Andy's in a marquee. You could hold a wedding in there, mate, couldn't you? Put sweet tea in here, <laughs> honestly. It's just push I might be in there in a bit just to get out the wind. <laughs> so it looks like I made a boo boo. I think the pole's got to go through the inner as well. There's like little loops here that I think the pole has to go through. Got there in the end. Tried to go as tiny as I can with everything today. I have brought um, storm shelter just in case because I haven't got loads of cover. So I've got the smallest compact stove, gas stove anyway, which is the jet boil stash. You'll see that a bit later on. My sleeping pad is the Exped Sinmat Hyperlite. I've had this down below freezing actually. It's a it's a really good pad and I've probably had it seven years, something like that now, and it's still going strong apart from the odd little bit of mould that you can see inside, but you get that with some of the older pads. That's all me kit, me little toolbox and what have you. Got a jacket, we'll get that in the tent. But yeah, I hope they've not left it at home. <laughs> that would be a disaster. Oh, it's that small look. Look at that. That is a Thermarest Vespa zero degree, zero degree quilt. Compacts down to literally nothing. And a pillow. That's about it. There's 900 fill down this, so lofts up really well. Got all the mod cons as well, look. Lantern and pump. I've shown you this inflate the pad before, but in the morning, these deflate pads as well, so it gets every little last bit of air out. And there's connectors for every sort of sleeping pad. So today hasn't gone quite as I'd expected. I was supposed to be camping up on Derwent Edge. I'd paid my parking just about to cross the road and Andy <laughs> nearly ran me over. He was heading up Kinder Scout, so I joined him. I reckon Andy's doing better than me. I might actually get in there with him, sod it. <laughs> it's getting a bit chilly. Where's my coat? I'll check out the views and then I'm going to get some snap on the go. It's gorgeous up here. Look at the colours, look at the heather. You've got purple hills. It's a bit windy for stepping on here. But we're going to do it anyway. Bath in the morning. I'll get my little tent down there.
some cracking little natural shelters you could crawl under. Posh pork or beans. I've not had this one before, you like it, don't you? Pre course meal again today. Starter, pepper army, and then chocolate pudding. There's nothing posh about this, mate. Tastes alright, though. It's a bit like pulled pork, isn't it? Yeah. Those clouds look ominous. Borrowed Andy's shelter is a bit of a windshield. Late night coffee. Hey, I'm going to get my head down, but just seen something really weird in the sky. It looked, <laughs> I'm not joking, it looked like Santa were going across the sky with, you know, dozen reindeers. I've got a tiny bit of footage on my phone. I've got... I don't know what that is mate, but that looks weird. Right, so I managed to get in. <laughs> it's a bit snug, um, but it's roomier than a bivvy. Tossed and turned as usual, but slept. As you can see, there's not huge amount of space but this inner is bone dry uh, there's a bit of moisture on the inside of fly but it's not a lot of wind so that's expected especially in a small tent sun rises due in about five minutes but i don't think we're going to get one we'll have a look Not too bad that actually. Well, as soon as the sun rose, it's like <laughs> disappearing again. A few spots of rain. But other than that, nice morning. Right, this little bit of cover. Don't know if you're meant to be able to do it. There's no specific tie-out point on there. Oh, 
I reckon this should be on George Clark's Amazing Spaces. Little home from home, this. Stunning views. Everything you need. Sofas and what have you are overrated anyway, aren't they? A little bit of a break in the rain, so I'm gonna get most of it packed away, leave the tent up in case I need to jump back in. And then, when Andy's about done, we'll get off the hill. I said last night I'd show you how you can deflate with this pump as well. So, when you want to inflate it. The adapter goes in the side where the lantern goes and then when you press the button blows there that way deflate just stick it on the other side and then when you press it on it sucks the air out most of the air comes out anyway Makes rolling your pad up a lot easier. There we go. So the quilt's bone dry. Thought it'd have a little bit of moisture on it from touching the side walls of the tent. I'm not bothering with the compression stack, it's just going straight in here. All squashed down anyway. Looks like it's clearing up a little bit. Bonus. Although there's a bit of low cloud coming in, look. You can see a little bit better now, there's nothing in it. So it's definitely more comfortable than a bivy. There's a little pocket in there. Small vestibule. And when I've had this, in tarp mode or whatever I've called it. There's a little bit of room to cook as well. I wouldn't want to be cooking in here without that open. And when I eventually worked out how to pitch it properly, it worked great. Haven't brought my poncho today because Try to squeeze everything into a 22 litre pack. The poncho is just a little bit bulky. To be honest, I just wanted to see if I could do it. So I've never been down to a pack this small before. I don't think I would again, to be honest with you. Although I've got everything I really need. I just like that little bit of extra space. It is a little bit too packed. But I reckon I could camp all year round on a 30 litre pack so i'm going to try and challenge myself to do that not every camp just once a month i'm going to get out and just prove that it can be done in all seasons although for a little bit of pack size and weight having something like a tarp like that gives you loads of options
come back in as well. <laughs> Look at that. So this is now, it's making me question my hoop bivvies. I can't see the point of carrying a kilo, nearly, for a Rab Ridge Raider that is smaller, single skin, when this is similar sort of footprint, lighter, more compact, got better features. I don't think it would be as robust. I could put the Rab Ridge Raider in any sort of wind and it's just not going to go anywhere. This is a little bit more delicate, so I've got to pick and choose my spots, but the new hoop bivvy. Although there's a spanner in the works on its way, I have got another tiny tent coming, which I think has got better strength and features than this one. So that will probably be my go-to. You will see that in the next tiny tent video. I can't believe it's all gone in there. Looks like we've timed that all right. It's just started raining again. I'd rather be walking down in the rain than packing away in the rain. Nice little spot that. Left no trace again as always. It was quite boggy when we came over yesterday. It's been raining since, so <laughs> the dilemma is, do we go back the same way? Will it be even boggier? Or do we take the longer route back? Told you it was a bit boggy. It's not too bad though. It's not like we're sinking up to our knees in it. Just have to be careful with your foot placement. Alright, this is where it gets interesting. Not so bad over there. You've got to pick your spot so that firmish me believes. Yeah. <laughs> and then you've got to just go for it. Ah. Not too bad that. Well we're just getting a view of the the Great Ridge. Right, let's summarize this little adventure. So getting out with a 22 litre backpack was quite enjoyable. Using basic gear again, although it was quite expensive gear. So to get down to that sort of volume, sometimes you need to spend a little bit of money. However, I will leave links in the description below to more budget friendly options. They won't be as lightweight and they won't be as packable. So you might need a bigger backpack. But at the end of the day, all I want to show is that you only need a handful of items to be able to get out camping. So I'm liking the concept of using a tiny tent to replace my hooped bivy bags. I think they're more functional, more comfortable, and surprisingly, they're lighter weight and more packable than a bivy. Let's pause to show you some of the views. Wow, look at this. It's not glorious sunshine, it's very atmospheric though. I'm either getting braver or more stupid. You decide. So where was I? Um, yeah, you only need a few basic items, shelter, a sleeping pad, a sleeping bag, something to maybe a stove to cook with. So I reckon I could get one basic setup that's around 30 litre mark that I can use all year round. So I'm going to challenge myself to do a little tiny adventure once a month just to prove that it can be done. And even if you're using bulkier, more budget gear, you can still get away with a 45 to 50 litre pack and get everything in that you need. Anyway, I'm gonna wrap it up for today. I'll leave you with the stunning views. I'm just parked down there in Edale. 
It's a lovely morning again. Andy's filmed a video as well. I will leave a link in the description below. So go check that out, please. Ta-da, and I'll see you next time.